Hi guys, I'm reading this book called Thanh Đông Đất Việt, which means Vietnamese genius or Vietnamese prodigy. And I heard from the producers today we're going to have an, a Vietnamese prodigy to come to our studio. His name is called the Google Boy, the Google Guy. I wonder what talent can you really have with Google? Are you excited to find out? I'm excited too. So let's see what this guy's talent is so that he's called the Google Boy. All right, let's go. Let's get ready to face off the one and only Phan Đăng Nhật Minh, special guest of this episode. Let's see what he's going to share with you about his ability and the topic of this episode, The Prodigy. Next on IELTS On The Go Journey, welcome back Khánh Vi to the show. She will bring you on the promenade tour around Thuan Kim Lake with the first time ever youngest group on the show. What are they gonna share with you about their starting point, learning English? Let's wait and see. And last but not least on our menu today will be the great consultancy from Dan Well, which is also IELTS expert. He will share with you the precious advice to conquer the IELTS. First, let's get to the studio with our beautiful host, VP Chen, and the prodigy of this episode, Phan Đăng Nhật Minh, right now. If you've watched some of our shows on BTV, you might have heard of two shows, Vietnam's Brainiest Kid as well as The Road to Olympia. Now, if you've watched both of those shows, you probably have heard of a boy called the Google Boy. And let's have a chat with him and see what his journey is and what advice he has to share with all of us. So hi Ming, how is it going? Nice, thank you. How are you? I'm good. You really learned how to read at a young age, at 16 and a half months old. Uh, I was told that by my parents. Did you ever feel special growing up? At a young age, I did feel a little bit special and due to that, I tried to like, separate myself from my friends, my classmates. But as I grow, I realized that I'm just a normal boy as other people. Therefore, I try to be more outgoing and like, to communicate and to open more with my classmates. People call you the Google boy. Yeah. Do you identify with that term? Well, there are a lot of Google boys around the world. Google boys. And yeah. I don't think that I can be identified with that term. I also don't think that I'm suitable for that term because Google like a big sea of knowledge and information. I am what I know is like a tiny drop of water in that ocean. I don't think that I'm very suitable for the term the Google boy. People name you the Google boy. It's because you have a vast collection of knowledge. Where do you get all of this knowledge from? Well, I get my knowledge mostly by studying at school, but I also read books and search the internet for information during my free time. And I also watch TV shows and I watch news to find out what happens around the world. Do you think this is something that's you that's doing it or your parents that are the ones that are pushing you? What do you think are the reasons for your, you know, your, your good work and study habits. Both of those factors affected me to build my study habits. At a young age, I was a lazy boy, so my parents tried to make me study harder. But when I became more mature, I realized the importance of study and learning for my future. So I started to study more. So you, how, how much time actually do you spend studying per day? If you ask me about the time I spend for studying, I would say only about one to three hours. But if you ask me the time about learning, I would say most of my day. It seems to me that you, know, you spend a lot of your youth learning. Because I, I think you mentioned something that's extremely important. Learning is different from studying. Right? And learning, we're always constantly learning. So you spend a lot of your time, your youth, learning and studying. Now that you're a young adult, how do you envision yourself continuing to learn or continuing to study? One thing that I have to continue to study and to learn is social skill. Mm -hmm. Because I spend a lot of time studying and learning like on the books, learning knowledge. But I did not spend many t much time for developing my social skill. I'm now in Grade 12, and I'm 17 years old. 
So I'm starting to become an adult and social skills are very important for any adult. So I have to try to develop my social skill so that I can be more successful. When it comes to social skills, I think I love the fact that you're so honest about all the things that you need to develop because a lot of the times people deem you as this genius, as this prodigy, as this person who can answer any question. Um, but at the same time, you know, you're, we're all human beings and we all have our insecurities and we all have certain things that we need to work on. And I'm, I'm very happy that you're able to share all of this with our audience. Now, can you give our audience a couple of tips? And this can be tips on how to study better, tips on how to learn better. About tips for studying better, I just have one word, focus. If you can focus on your study, you will achieve a lot of good work. And about learning, you don't have to learn hard because learning is not just about on the book, it's about getting new skills and new knowledge from every source else. So I think that the most important is you have to be informed about everything that happens around you. This will help you get knowledge, even when you don't recognize that you did get it. But sometimes it will pop out and you will be able to use it for good use. Now, you're one of those people that struck out to me as a person who's quite fluent. English is not an easy language. How did you learn English? I started to know about English from my study at school. At first, I was very, very bad at English. <laughs> but after a, about two or three years studying at school with a very low score and rate at English, one of my relatives who worked for an international organization, and she also she had a very good English skill, decided to spend her time to train for me. After the training with her, I can say that I am much better in English. From that time to now, I have studied English harder because I also recognize the importance of English in the current world. I know you did share with me that you're super interested to be a chemical researcher in the future. Yeah. Um, and I'm sure English is going to be something that's going to help you a lot. I think it's great. It's been a great conversation. Now, if you were to basically want me to ask you any question, what will you want me to ask you? Well, I don't think that I want to answer any more questions. Okay, if, you, if we don't want to ask any more questions, then it's the perfect time for us to actually go on to the next section where you'll, be a ch well, you'll get a chance to be faced off with a couple of challenges. So, guys, IELTS Challenge coming right up next. This is our face-off challenge, and we're gonna start off with a very simple challenge. It's called the indifference game. And the purpose of the indifference game is for me to ask you 10 questions, and you're not allowed to answer to the question. You have to answer it differently. Clear? Yeah. All right, let's start. Okay, Ming, are you ready? I'm ready now. What's your favorite color? My fish. How many pyramids are there in Egypt? Black. Wow, you're fast, you're good. Okay, what do you do in your free time? Five. Oh, there, he, he slowed down there. Uh, when did you start to study English? 10 o'clock. Oh, well, that's wrong. That's answering to the question. Which country do you want to travel to? No. It's hard, yeah, it's hard. Which song do you usually sing? No. Do you like Michael Jackson? No. Oh, you oh. answered to the question. Oh, okay. <laughs> It's quite counterintuitive, isn't it? Okay, let's move on to the next question. How old is your father? Gray. <laughs> what does APEC mean? A-P-E-C. Five. Have you ever been to Canada? Five. Five. <laughs> I think, you know, the, the yes-no questions you suffer the most with. Yeah, I think that I stumbled with the yes-no question. Yeah. Yeah, do you, think those, do you think that was a difficult exercise for you? It's a difficult exercise because it's hard to think differently from what you hear. Mm. But there's one thing that I'm super curious about. I want to kind of test out your Googling skills, your Google knowledge skills. Is that okay? Yeah, I think it's okay. Okay, so what's Vietnam's land area? 331,212 
kilometer square. Is this correct? <laughs> what is the sixth number of pi? Like the sixth number or the sixth decimal number? The sixth decimal number. Two. Sixth decimal number of pi, is it two? <laughs> what about the tenth decimal number? Nine. Okay, the tenth decimal number of pi, is it nine? You are absolutely correct. Yes. Did you do calculations or did you just pull up your memory? I just like trying to pull it out from my memory. I'm scared now. I'm a little scared. Okay, what year was the Mona Lisa painted? Based on my knowledge and what I have read, I think that the Mona Lisa was painted by Leonardo da Vinci in the 15th century. This is crazy! He's correct! And he, it just popped out of his head. I want that ability as well. So his, his tip is to focus and to practice and to practice and to practice. Yeah. Okay. All right. Thanks so much for coming on to the show. We had a lot of fun talking to you. And I'm, I'm so glad that, that we had a chance to meet. I think you'll do amazing things in the future. Thank you. All right, guys. Next up is the expert section. So let's move on to the IELTS expert. Coming up next, Ton IELTS on the go journey, Khánh V. We are ready for your promenade tour around Tuan Kim Lake and the Young Elementary Group. Surely it will be really amazing to see how greatly they can showcase their ability of speaking English. Don't go anywhere. The next cool part of the show comes to you right now.